And finally, uh, we have Sean Purdy, who uh, completed a PhD at Queen's on housing at Regent Park, I believe. <coughs> Um, and he will be speaking on Brazil's June days of 2013, mass protest, class, and the left. Um, well, thanks very much um, uh, to, to everybody, to Brian and Joan and Julia and Sean and, and all the other organizers of this, uh, this great, uh, great event. Um, uh, I studied with Brian at Queen's University for, uh, for several years, and we've known each other for maybe 25, 25 years or so. And if there's anything that's, that I've learned, um, from Brian, it's, it's uh, the importance of capitalism and class. And in my talk today about the, about the June days in Brazil, the great mass protests um, in 2013, um, uh, I'll be talking about uh, something very simple, uh, uh, very simple to us, I think, very obvious, uh, but also very necessary, and that's the importance of capitalism and class in understanding uh, the great mass protests in 2013. Um, I speak uh, as a participant in the events and as, as a long-time uh, uh, revolutionary socialist and activist, uh, both here in Canada and Brazil. Um, and I also speak, I think, as part of a group of scholar activists. I'm a, a professor of history at the University of Sao Paulo. Um, uh, as a group of scholar activists, including Marcelo uh, from Rio de Janeiro and many other people, um, those are, uh, that is, academics um, who are engaged in, 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 in struggles. Uh, I also uh, I'm also very proud of the fact that it was many of my, my students and, and students from my department of history at the University of Sao Paulo and other departments in the university uh, who were the main, uh, the main leaders of the movement in 2013. That's something it was, uh, it was very, uh, very gratifying. Um, for those who are interested, um, my talk, uh, I'm doing a summary of the talk. Uh, the talk will be, uh, it should be published uh, early next year in the, in the journal Latin American Perspectives. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, I published a piece in Jacobin about uh, recent developments in Brazil in, in 2015 for those who are mo uh, interested in English. So, on the 17th of June, 2013, more than 2 million Brazilians took to the streets in more than 400 cities in militant rallies and marches against transit fare hikes, poor quality education and healthcare services, and the immense public investment in mega events, such as the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Olympics. These massive demonstrations, with more than 100,000 participants in each of the two largest cities in the country, Sao Paulo and Rio, capped off, uh, capped off a two-week series of demonstrations initially provoked by a 20-cent 20 uh, 20 increase in bus, train, and subway fares in Sao Paulo. And I was reminded by the other talks about the importance of repertoires, which I'm not really going to speak about a lot. Uh, but these were uh, very militant uh, demonstrations with lots of street theater. In Brazil, there's frequently drum sections um, uh, with Brazilian drum music. Uh, there were allegorical turnstiles, uh, which were burned um, in protest against the, the, the fair hikes, and, and many other aspects of street theater, which were very important in drawing in, uh, drawing in young people. Uh, Facing brutal police repression, the harsh opposition of politicians at all levels and in all the major political parties, including the Workers' Party, uh, the federal government, uh, the, the party that's in power at the federal government, as well as clear bias by the mass media, the largely young, and this is important, working class protesters soon forced municipal governments in over 100 cities to revoke proposed fare increases. Um, we call the the we call them we call this in Portuguese the Jornadas de Junho, which are the June days. It's it's not to it's not to actually compare it to the to the July days during the Russian Revolutionary process, but it it, it, it sounds nice. Uh, the June days <laughs> uh, were the most important political struggles in the country since the great working class and popular mobilizations of the late seventies and early eighties that ended the military dictatorship in eighty five. And it's become so important that Marcelo and many other colleagues in Brazil have just uh, have recently launched uh, a left activist intellectual blog, and the name of the blog is June. Uh, uh, it's become so important, uh, this, uh, the, these, the, these movements in 2013, that it's, it's, it's got a widespread uh, presence. Uh, and uh, before I make my argument, I wanted to show you just a, a couple minutes of, of some uh, video of, of the June days. Um, there's Portuguese commentaries, yeah, you can ignore it for those who don't understand Portuguese, uh, but just to give you a, a visual sense of, of, of what happened. This 
is one of the best videos I've found. foram as ruas no Brasil. Dados oficiais falam na maior manifestação brasileira desde os caras pintadas, que pediu o impeachment de Fernando Collor em 1992, quando cerca de 700 mil pessoas foram às ruas. A jornada de junho começaram com o um chamado do movimento Passe Livre pela revogação do aumento de 20 centavos na tarifa do transporte público. Junho do Brasil, pelo menos as perspectivas e as possibilidades para pensar o Brasil que são novas possibilidades de para descobrir e pensar, praticar ou estar em sociedade no Brasil. No quarto ato realizado em São Paulo, no dia 13 de junho, as manifestações continuavam e até então o poder público não havia dialogado com a sociedade civil. Nesse dia, os manifestantes foram violentamente reprimidos pela polícia do Estado. A população foi atingida com balas de borracha, cacetetes e gás pimenta. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, in the paper that I'm, I'm publishing, I, I include uh, websites of various uh, amateur videos and so on of the repression and also of the, of the demonstrations. And there's been already several documentaries made of the, of the events. They're in Portuguese. I don't know if anything's been come out in English yet, but uh, they're very, they're very interesting to uh, to see. And it was it was very scary. Um, um, uh, it, it's like uh, the first time that I took uh, uh, that I. I suffered uh, the effects of tear gas, and it's, a, it's really nasty, tear gas. Uh, um, here in Canada, I, I suffered pepper spray, uh, which is also nasty, but um, tear gas is, is particularly nasty. So uh, I stress capitalism class because many of the analyses of the June days of 2013 either completely ignore uh, the, uh, the, these questions or downplay it a lot. And so there's been various analyses of, of the June days. Um, I want to talk about several of them and then make an argument about the importance uh, of a Marxist analysis of social movements um, uh, 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 to understand the June days. First of all, the media, the mainstream media. Uh, first, they condemn the violence in the first four or five uh, uh, demonstrations. The whole, the whole process uh, took only a few, uh, two and a half, three weeks um, before we, we won. Uh, but the first four demonstrations were roundly condemned by the media. Um, they condemn the vandalism, they condemn the violence of the demonstrators, and so on. Um, after the, the brutal police repression on the 13th of June, um, the media tried to co-opt the movement and, and, and switch their position to, to one embracing the movement as, an anti as a generic anti-corruption movement, especially against the PT government, against the Workers' Party government. Uh, hypocritically self-serving and dishonest, the media. Uh, but also hypocritical, self-serving, and dishonest was the position of the Workers' Party. Uh, they also condemned the demonstrations, um, um, uh, criticizing the demonstrators for being ungrateful uh, for all the things that they had done for the Brazilian working class and young people. Uh, and several leading members, uh, ministers and also local city councillors and so on, um, uh, uh, joined the chorus of condemnation uh, of, the van of the supposed vandalism and violence of the demonstrators. Um, uh, we can dismiss the, the mainstream media um, accounts, we can, we can even dismiss the dishonesty of the, of the Workers' Party analyses of the, of the, the, of the June days. Um, but even in academic analyses, um, uh, there's been um, a downplaying or a complete ignorance of questions of capitalism and class. Um, I won't mention the authors, they're Brazilian authors, uh, but there's been very little um, uh, very little class analysis of what happened um, beyond what Marcelo and a, and a small group of us have been have been working out in the last couple have been doing in the last couple of years, and this reflects, I think, even in academic analysis, the fact that in new social movement theory, class has been completely ignored or downplayed. There's been a whole number of studies that have shown this um, uh, analyses of, of journals 
where there's a lot of focus on the microdynamics of collective action and social networks and so on, which completely ignore the objective conditions of, of struggle and, and, the, and even the intentions of the actors, uh, which I want to stress here today. So the first thing to, to understand uh, in terms of context is the, is the Workers' Party government, uh, which began in 2003 and continues, as far as I know, because the president of Brazil might be impeached in the next few days. And so I've been checking, I've been here in Canada for two weeks, and we've been checking the internet every day to see if you know, there's going to be a new president. But this Workers' Party government um, uh, um, uh, made, made important gains uh, for poor people in the working class in Brazil. Uh, they raised the minimum wage. Um, they uh, implemented directed income transfer programs for the poorest Brazilians. Uh, and uh, brought many Brazilians out of extreme poverty. Um, in particular, there was a, there's a, a program called the Bolsa Familia, uh, which might be translated as the Family Fund, which is a direct income transfer for the very poorest families in Brazil. And uh, uh, in 2010, one quarter of the population uh, in Brazil was relying on this um, direct income transfer. Um, they've also invested modestly in, in social programs, expanded to some extent, um, post-secondary education, and so on. Uh, but there was many contradictions in this model, because at the same time as, as modestly increasing uh, social programs, they've also made a pact with the devil, with the neoliberal de devil, um, and uh, uh, maintaining neoliberal financial policies, high interest rates, among the highest interest rates in the world. Um, they managed to pay off most of the international debt, but most of it was just transferred to national banks. Uh, national banks who are so profitable that the last year, the four largest banks in Brazil, their profits were greater than the, the GDPs of 93 countries in the world. Um, they're incredibly profitable. And I cited an article in the, New York, in the New York Times about this in the article for English readers. They also made a deal with the devil in terms of politics because in order to govern the country, they, need to, they need, needed to make deals with centrist parties, many of, many of whose uh, leaders uh, uh, had bloody hands uh, and a bloody history during the dictatorship. They made deals with the most right-wing, um, uh, obnoxious, rotten politicians in the country, corrupt, um, corrupt, and, and, and with a violent history of supporting the dictatorship, uh, the military dictatorship, and so on. Even, even the president, the former president, Fernando Collor, who was impeached, uh, who was driven out of office in the 1990s. And so, while, there, while they were a, a significant gains uh, in, in uh, quality of life in Brazil, in salaries and so on, there were also many expectations created among uh, many young people. And for, for some time, the PT government was able to, to, to deal with these expectations. But when the, when the world financial crisis finally hit Brazil in around 2012, because I know it happened here earlier, but it finally hit Brazil in about 2012, many of these contradictions came to the fore. Uh, and so it's no surprise that, um, that there was, um, that there was a, a group of, there was a new working class, um, highly educated in many cases with university degrees, but, uh, in, but working in, in low-wage, precarious, precarious jobs. Um, and so this is really important, just five minutes left, yeah. Um, and what, what, a, what, a, what arose from these expectations was many people, um, um, you know, this is not uncommon like in the 1960s when there were actually increasing incomes and so on. People had increasing expectations about things. The same thing happened in Brazil. Uh, and especially around this issue of urban mobility. Uh, not simply the idea of uh, available public transit, but the quality of transit, the quality of light, urban life. Uh, in, in, in the big, huge cities that most people live in in Brazil. So this was very, very important uh, as well. Um, and so it's also no, no surprise that in 2012, strike levels were at their highest in Brazil since 1996. And it's even worthwhile putting the June days, a few weeks in June, into a longer cycle of protests that began the year before, uh, uh, many strikes by young workers. Um, uh, and continuing a tape uh, until perhaps the middle of, of 2014, because the June days also sparked, uh, 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 inspired uh, teacher strikes in many states uh, at the end of 2013. They inspired uh, 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 successful strikes by street cleaners in, in Rio de Janeiro, uh, the majority of whom were black workers, uh, and so on. So uh, to understand the June days, we need to understand this larger context of strikes um, and 
Uh, also, uh, which I've forgotten to mention, the, the, the growth and the, uh, the great militancy of the homeless workers movement in Brazil, who were able to, on a day's notice, pull out 10, 15,000 people on demonstrations. And so all this was part of a, uh, of a larger, wider context of, of class uh, dissatisfaction and, and, and anger. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. But most of the analyses focus on a few things. They focus on a generic anti-corruption movement, uh, they focus on the role of social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, uh, and they focus um, exclusively on um, on, uh, on, uh, on the idea of just young people want to get out in the streets just to to to, to make uh, to make trouble uh, because they're young people, right? And this even some of the academic analyses have shown this as well. And I think we have to be we have to be very careful. Obvi obviously, um, the, uh, uh, criticisms of corruption. Uh, are widespread in Brazil, so that this 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 is a part of it. Obviously, the role of Facebook and, and Twitter and so on were, were were important, although it's been highly exaggerated that their their influence. Um, uh, what we have to take into account are the are the actual intentions of the people who organized this movement. Um, they were young anti-capitalists, um, anarchist influenced, but many ex-Trotskyists, uh, and who had who had very friendly relations with many of the left groups, uh, even though they were autonomous and had horizontal forms of organizing and so on, they were also very much part of a larger left movement and very friendly uh, with many, of the, with many uh, Marxists and, and Orthodox Trotskyists and so on. And so this is important as well. Um, and what, are, what are else did I want to say? Um, I'll, just, I'll wrap up talking about, the, about the, the question of the media because I think the social media, because this has been really, uh, really been, uh, um, exaggerated, I think, by many authors, in, in, including many new social movement authors, such as Manuel Castells, who's written about, who happened to be in Brazil during the, the June days, and wrote about it, um, uh, uh, this focus on uh, social media. It's obvious that like, we use Facebook and Twitter to, 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 to uh, publicize the events and so on, and I think, uh, you know, we can, we can study the importance of these things. Uh, but just to give you an, uh, an idea of how this was exaggerated, um, uh, in the international media, in The Guardian and in The Economist, and something which has been uh, also uh, reflected in commentaries by two new social media, new social movements theorists, um, were placards that some of the demonstrators had which said, Nós saímos de Facebook, which means, which, which, which they interpreted as meaning, we came from Facebook. That is, that it was Facebook that it was Facebook that brought them out to the demonstrations. It's absurd. It's just, it, it's, it, it's actually a wrong translation. It's an erroneous translation that the sloppy journalists at The Economist and The Guardian picked up and several new, new social movement theorists have, uh, uh, have copied. What it means is we left Facebook, we left the realm of digital activism to get to the street, right? Uh, and so, and, but it's interesting how like, just a simple error like this was picked up by many people as if it was Facebook as if it were Facebook and Twitter that, that caused this, you know. Um, and so I'll, I'll, leave it, I'll leave it there, but uh, I didn't have a chance to make a lot of my arguments, but uh, just, just, very, just very quickly, the importance for the left. Um, first of all, it's, 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 as Marcelo and others have argued, uh, it's really imperative uh, that we try to link up this, this new uh, working class. Some people call it the precariat, other people call it the new proletariat. Um, young, uh, uh, reasonably educated uh, young people who work in shitty jobs uh, with, with, with trade unions. And trade unions were completely absent from this, this, uh, this, uh, this process. They, they, they called a, a, a so-called general strike on the 11th of July, a month later after the events, and they were only able to muster like 10,000 people in Sao Paulo, where we were able to muster uh, hundreds of thousands on the street. And this is really reflective of the times that, that a, a, a social movement of young people, and I should mention, uh, um, uh, polls have shown uh, clearly that the participators, uh, even if the, some of the main leaders were young university students, um, the majority of protesters were working class people. This has been document, well documented and so on. Um, it, it really shows how the union movement has, been, uh, has, has dropped the ball in this. And so it's important that we, org that we, we try to link up these new, these, these new social movements with the most combative, combative sections of the working class in Brazil and the trade unions. 
But it's also clear, and I mentioned this yesterday, I know it came across perhaps as a, a bit sectarian, we have to, be re we have to build a, something that's, that's autonomous from right-wing movements and also autonomous from the government of the Workers' Party. Uh, we, there's just no way that we can continue our struggles uh, with a party which is really not in our interests and in the interests of the working class in Brazil. Thanks very much. to everyone. Um, we've covered a, a very wide range of time and space today, and yet a, a number of common themes have emerged. Um, certainly on the uh, more bitter side, we've seen uh, the plight of the dispossessed uh, continue over uh, quite some time. But uh, more sweetly, we've also seen the power of collective direct action, and of course the continued relevance of critiques of capital and class. I wanted to thank the panelists for sharing their incredible wisdom and insights with us today. I hope I can speak on behalf of everyone when I say that we're all the better for it. Yeah.